It's 21 minutes past seven. Mencap says its vision is a world where people with a learning disability are valued equally, listened to and included. But today, questions are being raised about the standards of care that they offer. It comes after the death of a young man in one of its homes. A former government adviser has told this programme that the charity faces a conflict of interest. It needs to decide if it's a service provider or a campaign group. Breakfast Jim McCubbin reports. Danny Tozer loved tea, china teapots, trampolines. He had learning disabilities, autism and epilepsy. And in 2013, he moved into a Mencap care home. And I thought, that's great, we'll get involved, we'll have meetings, we'll see how it all works, we'll be part of the Mencap family. That never appeared at all. It was a house which just ran under its own rules, run by the staff, some of whom perhaps one would rather wish they weren't running it. Danny died after having a seizure here in 2015. In the years before, his family raised numerous concerns about poor staffing levels, a lack of activities and Danny's needs not being met. Concerns which were echoed in a CQC report and an independent report commissioned by the council. But it took two years for the family to get scrutiny at an inquest. I think if we hadn't really pushed things, we might to this day possibly never have heard anything again from anyone. Danny's family took this scrapbook to the inquest to remind witnesses of his life. Witnesses spoke of a care plan which said he should be checked every 10 minutes, but he had a fatal seizure after being unobserved for around 30. The coroner ruled he died of natural causes. There was no neglect, but he said the charity had poorly communicated with the family. We feel we're, you know, as families, up against a big system. I think it also indicates that the lives of people with learning disabilities aren't as important as those of other people. No neglect, but how do you think this reflects on MENCAP? Well, they didn't find neglect, but I think if you listen to the evidence during the two weeks, there were a lot of concerns about MENCAP, and I don't think these are going away. We are so very sorry that Danny died. Mr and Mrs Tozer felt that at times MENCAP fell short of the high standards which we set ourselves. This is a huge concern to us, and we very much hope they will work with us should they wish to. Are you proud of the service that's been described during the inquest? Jane has said uh, we need to reflect on the outcome of the inquest. But I just want, do, so. in this moment, to ask the description of this service has been one that you are proud of? Yes. But that is not an opinion shared widely by those who have followed this inquest. This inquest hasn't just shone a light on Danny's death, but his life, and it has led one former government advisor on learning disabilities to tell us that he believes MENCAP can no longer claim to be the voice of learning disabilities. Rob Gregg, one-time National Director for Learning Disabilities and the charity Learning Disability England, said this has highlighted the conflict of interest Royal MENCAP has in being a major provider of services whilst at the same time claiming to be an organisation that campaigns on behalf of people with learning disabilities. It should choose which it wishes to be. The charity Scope has decided you can't do both, especially against a backdrop of falling social care budgets. This month, it will hand over the keys to its very last care home. His family miss him, his friends miss him. He lit up our lives. He was, he was fun to be with. We just have to live with that, really, and miss Danny every day. Jay McCubbin, BBC News. Well, Derek Lewis is the chair of MENCAP and he joins us now. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Good morning. How, how do you feel watching that piece and hearing the criticisms against MENCAP? First of all, desperately sad. Uh, Danny was a lively, energetic, engaging young man and his early death is a matter for sad, real sadness for all of us. And our sympathy goes to the parents uh, who have had to endure his early death but also have had to go through a very traumatic two weeks of a, an inquest into the reasons for that death. He was a much loved boy. Uh, the uh, people who looked after him uh, were very dedicated to him and loved him. It was dis they were distraught at his death uh, and it has been very traumatic for them too going through this inquest. But that's now done. The coroner has given his verdict which was that the death was due to natural causes related to his epilepsy and that there was no neglect involved. 
So we remain very sad and uh, very sympathetic to all who have suffered as a result. There, there have been criticisms, though, because a Care Quality Commission report found people in the house weren't safe. An independent council report also found failings. And the family clearly weren't happy. They talked about the lack of communication with MENCAP. So how do those things go hand in hand, would you say? Well, clearly the coroner identified a, some failures in communication between MENCAP, uh, Mr and Mrs Tozer and the City uh, of York uh, and we accept those and action has been taken to address those and as always we learn from situations like this and a number of other actions have been taken what such actions? as the, such as the way we uh, transfer people with learning disabilities from one carer to another to ensure that that is seamless uh, but the quality of care uh, the caringness of it was of a very high standard and the staff there were among the best in the country and I pay tribute to them. One of the overriding messages that comes out of Jane's report there is that idea of a conflict of interest. That you can't possibly be a campaigner for rights of people with disabilities and yet also providing the services for them because clearly there are issues that you've got to contend with in terms of budgets and care provision. Scope has handed over its care facilities for exactly that reason. Why haven't you done the same? Well, it's a perfectly reasonable question. Uh, MENCAP has been around for 70 years, dedicated to improving the lives of those with learning disabilities. And that question is one we ask ourselves regularly. Our view is that it does not involve a conflict of interest. In fact, that there are significant benefits as a result of it. It does not inhibit our willingness to stand up to government, to challenge government on policy, to challenge How government on funding. How can you challenge funding. government on policy, though, when you yourselves are not providing good enough care? Overall, Royal Mencap has an excellent record in terms of care. 90, over 95% of the services that we provide are rated good or outstanding by the CQC. It's good, good enough, though, because only 3% are outstanding. Compared with only 80% for adult care as a whole, we are among the leaders in the quality of care that we provide. Now, we are not perfect. Uh, it is, things go wrong from time to time, and we are always learning. But that doesn't stop us telling government what we think about their policies and about funding levels. And in fact, the, the fact that we know learning disabilities so well through our experience in providing services gives us the expertise and the experience to do that more effectively with government and gives us additional credibility. It's interesting you talk about funding because ultimately when we talk about care and we talk about it on this programme a lot, it comes down to very tough decisions about funding. Is there the money there for the people that need it? Um, and it's that same idea of a conflict. If you're campaigning, proposing more money, more resources for care of people that need it, and yet at the same time you're the one that's having to balance the books at being a provider, how can you square that circle? We don't compromise for funding reasons on the care we provide, and we will but not you must take, make tough decisions about how that on, care and the resources for that care are allocated. Yes, we will not take on the provision of services unless we believe the funding is adequate, but we are vocal in persuading government that more funding is needed. We have been at the forefront of asking government to ensure that the cost of sleep-ins is properly funded. We have been at the forefront of persuading local pay people more uh, for this very difficult work that they do with people with learning disabilities. You mentioned there about the figures of um, the, the number of your uh, care services which are rated as outstanding or good. Only 3% of them are outstanding. Are they good enough then? Because surely there's room for improvement there. We always want them to be better. Very, very few services are rated outstanding by the Care Quality Commission. The bar is set very high and our aspiration is to increase that number. But good is good and it meets the needs of those we care for. Uh, but always we will aim to improve on it. With the benefit of hindsight, what would you have done differently in Danny's case? The communication would have been better, the issues with communication would have been escalated in the organisation earlier uh, and we would have been able to address those and the transition from the previous uh, provider in Liverpool would have been a smoother transition, uh, better for all concerned and the family would have felt more included. Derek Lewis, thank you very much for joining us.